Welcome to Level Up Mechanics. My name's Chris. Here's my co-pilot Josie. And today we'll be installing these OEM style switches for the third gen Toyota Tacoma. These OEM style switches and the switch panel are all available on Amazon. So if you're interested, I provided a link in the description below. These are the OEM style switches that we'll be installing today. You can see they light up red. These switches come in a variety of different colors that you can choose from. The install is fairly simple. Uh, the only tricky part is the electrical portion. However, we'll go over that in the video. Don't forget to leave a like for this video, especially for Josie, because she was super helpful and super happy today. Stay tuned. Let's get this install going. The very first step when working on anything electrical is to disconnect the negative cable from the battery. By disconnecting the negative cable, you'll be able to protect yourself and the electronics on your Tacoma from any accidental shocks while repairing or modifying electrical components. Okay, so this is pretty much most of what I need in order to install the OEM style switches, uh, if not everything. If I am missing something, I'll make sure to include it later on. But as you can see, we have our three switches here. We have a switch for a power winch, a switch for an LED light bar, and a switch for a twin air compressor. Foreshadowing much? Probably. And if you haven't already noticed, the first accessory out of the three that I'll be installing will be the Diodynamics 30-inch hidden light bar. In addition to the switches, I also have a set of zip ties that I'll use just to help keep the wiring all nice and neat. I have a heat gun that I will use to shrink the heat shrink tube. Here's the heat shrink tube that I'll be using for the electrical. Here's the switch panel that'll work with these OEM style switches where we will need to remove a trim piece off the dash and install this panel in order to add the switches to the panel. Here is a set of relays that I purchased off of Amazon. These relays are rated for 30 or 40 amps depending on how you wire the relay circuit and it comes in either a pack of six or a pack of ten. Here we have some electrical tape, my handy dandy pocket screwdriver, flashlight in case I need to see anything under the dash while I'm wiring up my circuits, and a Phillips screwdriver. We have a set of fuses. These switches are rated for only three amps, so I will be using a three amp fuse to power these switches. These switches basically just send a signal to a relay and once the relay is told to turn on, the relay is in charge of sending the actual power to your electrical accessory. Here we have some wire splitters and crimpers. Here I have a, an assortment of various electrical accessories and connections that I've just accrued over time. And I have a roll of 18 gauge wire. So now that I've gone over all of the tools and equipment that I'm going to use to install these switches, let's go ahead and start the process of taking everything apart and wiring everything up.
So now that I have all of the switches installed on the panel, let's go over how I did my wiring so that way you can get a better understanding of what I'm doing. So each switch has four wires. So that's a total of 12 wires that you would need to install one, you know, four for each switch. However, I don't want to run 12 individual wires through the firewall just so I can make these switches function properly. So what I did was I consolidated three out of the four wires for each switch. And let me show you how I did that. So here we have the three switches. Back here is the wiring harnesses for each individual switch. The green wire, and again, I'm using this right here as reference. The green wire is to connect from your source, so from the battery, through a fuse, and then the power goes to the switch. So I want to power all the switches at the same time, so I connected all three green wires together, so that way I have one wire going from the battery that has a fuse in between the battery and the switch, so that way I could power up all three switches. The red one wire, you're supposed to connect to the relay that controls the accessory that you're trying to power. So these wires, the red one wires, I actually did not consolidate because I want to leave them separate. So as I add accessories to the Tacoma, I all I have to do is plug in this one wire to the relay that controls the accessory that I'm trying to add. For example, in the next video, I will be installing the Diode Dynamics hidden light bar. So for this LED light bar switch, I have my red one wire that is ready to go to connect to go to the relay. This wire will send a 12 volt voltage signal to the relay to command the relay to either close or open, depending on how the relay works but it'll command the relay to send power to the accessory that you're trying to turn on. The red two wire I've consolidated into one wire. So that way I can tap into a power wire that has 12 volts when your dash lights are on or if you turn on your headlamps or parking lamps. All of the interior buttons in the car will light up so this red two wire is all consolidated so I can just tap into one wire that has 12 volts power whenever the dash lights are on. And then the ground wire I've consolidated into one connection so that way I can ground all of these switches at the same time. So this makes it a little easier when wiring up multiple switches so that way you don't have to run 12 individual wires through the firewall. Technically, all I need to run through the firewall is three wires. One wire to send power to the switch, one individual wire that sends power from the switch to a relay to command the relay, and a ground wire that grounds all of these switches. And again, the fourth wire, the red two wire, will not have to go through the firewall because I will be tapping into a 12 volt power wire near these buttons. And I'll show you how I tapped into that to get my 12 volt power signal when the dash lights come on. So that way the lower part of the switches will illuminate at nighttime. And then when you command a switch on, the upper part of the switch will illuminate to indicate that the accessory is on. Let me go ahead and take you back to the dash panel area so I can show you everything that I've done in that location. All right, now that we're back at the dash, let me show you how I tap into the power circuit for illuminating the switches whenever the dash lights come on, whenever you turn on your parking lamps or your headlamps. So if you haven't noticed already on this switch panel right here, I actually have already installed a fourth aftermarket switch uh, previously. I installed this to control my demon eyes that are in my custom headlamps. That's a completely different video that's on my channel if you're curious to check that out. But I've already figured out which wire I needed to tap into for the illumination circuit. From what it looks like on this switch, I actually tapped into the rear power window switch where 
the illumination circuit for this power window switch button. Right here is the connector for that power window switch for the rear window. And on this connector, you will have a green wire. And this green wire right here powers the illumination for the button at nighttime whenever you turn on your dash lights by turning on your headlights. So what I did is I tapped into this green power wire and then connected it to the red 2 illumination circuit for the aftermarket OEM style switch. Since I've already figured out which wire I needed to tap into for illuminating the buttons, now all I need to do with these additional buttons is for the red 2 wire right here that I've consolidated into one connector, I'm just going to tap into the red 2 wire on my existing OEM style switch connector so that way I don't mess with any more of the OEM wiring and if for some reason I damage this wire on this aftermarket switch harness it's easy for me to replace or repair and I won't have any issues down the road. It's a little more difficult when trying to repair OEM wiring harnesses as opposed to aftermarket ones where I've already given myself enough slack uh, for error basically as far as the length of the wire is concerned. Now in regards to the other wiring for the switches again the green wire will go through the firewall to a fuse which connects to the positive battery. The red one individual wire that I have for my light bar will go directly to the relay that controls the light bar. The red two wire again is going to be tapped into the illumination circuit and then the black ground wire will go through the firewall and to the ground or negative battery cable or post. You can also ground this anywhere on the chassis but with my current setup since I'll be installing the LED light bar pretty soon I've routed the three wires for the light bar harness through the firewall so you can see that the ground is black and then my blue and my white wires will be for powering the switch and then sending a signal to a relay here if uh, hopefully I can show you how I ran it through the firewall it may be a little dark I'll have to shine a flashlight so right here you're gonna have a very big grommet that has an OEM wiring harness going through the firewall what I did was I poked the side of the grommet, then ran my wires through the hole that I poked on the side of the grommet, so that way the grommet can still be weatherproof or weather resistant and not allow water or moisture into the vehicle, but will allow me to run the additional wires that I need to uh, through the firewall. And again, this setup, the way I'm doing it, I'm only doing three wires through the firewall as opposed to 12. It makes the job much simpler and more organized. Okay, so as far as the wiring going through the wire harness is concerned, this is a wire harness that comes with the hidden light bar that I'll be showing in the next video. But basically the black wire is my ground wire so that will connect to all the black wires on the switches. My white wire is the power wire going from the battery through a fuse and sends power to my switch. And then the blue wire is the wire that will send a 12 volt signal from the switch to the relay that powers my accessory. So that way I'm only having to use three wires and then the blue wire will connect to the individual red one wiring for the LED light bar switch. So now that the three main harnesses are connected, the last thing I need to do is just tap into the illumination circuit. So that way the aftermarket buttons will illuminate anytime I turn on my headlights or anytime the dash lights are on. In order to do this, we will take our red two wires that I've all connected together and we will tap into the power wire for the illumination circuit, which is this green wire for the rear window switch. Most of these wires right here, if you don't have a power rear window, the green wire on each one of these tends to be the illumination circuit. 
for that particular switch. So since I've already tapped into it once, I don't want to tap into the original wiring harness again. So I'm just going to tap into this previously installed OEM style switch and I'm just going to tap into this red 2 wire that's right here and then connect it using a vampire clip. So all this clip does is bites down onto the wire, you snap it closed, and then you connect the connector, the male end connector, into the butt of the vampire clip. So now that all of the wires are wired up for the switches and the positive and the ground wires are connected at the battery, now it's time to test the actual OEM style switches and see if they actually work. So the first thing we're going to test is to see if the bottom portion of the switches illuminate once I turn the headlamps on and I'll go ahead and flip the switch now. And I don't know how well you can see, but let me see if I can get a closer look here. Obviously, this will be much brighter at nighttime, as that's what the illumination circuit is intended, is for you to see it at night. But you can see the four switches, the three that I installed today, plus the one I've installed earlier, uh, the bottom portion all light up red. These switches you can get in a multitude of different colors, so when you're looking at them, just choose the color that you want. I chose red so the bottom portion lights up as soon as I turn the headlamps on and then if I want to activate the switch the top portion should light up. There we have one, two, three, and four. It is bright outside today so it's a little hard to tell but it'll look really good at night time. Alright guys, that's going to do it for this video. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments below and we'll get to them as soon as we can. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button if you thought the content was useful as it really helps the channel grow. I appreciate your time and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.